Moilueni Sanbonani Dumelang, welcome to each and every one of you across South Africa. Um, Western Cape, Sianibona, Eastern Cape, Moilueni, Northern Cape, Northwest Free State, KwaZulu Natal, and of course, Gauteng, where we are at. In fact, we're coming through you throughout South Africa. And with that said, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Luto John, and I'm going to be ushering you into today's talk. Um, I'd like to welcome all the learners, the young people, um, our future generation, the youngings of our country. I'd like to welcome also the teachers. Thank you, teachers, against these trying times that we are all going through, that you are still able to bring your learners to um, such in initiatives as hard as it is. We see you, Sianbona, Siabulela. Um, and also talking about teachers, the government, Department of Education and different stakeholders that are involved, um, we welcome you too to today and um, a warm welcome to our panel who are going to be giving us so much insight today about their own personal journeys um, and navigation as well as some exciting um, opportunities that are available within um, the different careers that we're going to be talking about today. I'd also like to give a special shout out to the um, Transnet CSI team. I mean, it is through the efforts, the hard work, and also your dedication um, to all that you do, to not only for the community, but more so the individual lives. And I've come to realize that also some of our panels will be speaking about their own journeys. So it's through initiatives like yours that we are able to even have um, such gatherings. And of course, I would like to welcome the Transnet leadership team um, who are virtually connected with all of us from all over. So as you can see, it is a jam-packed um, audience and different people coming together. Um, but the main focus is you, the youngings, the young people, um, to really not only take information about careers, but also understand that there are different journeys. Um, and luckily today we have such a great panel who I will be introducing um, a little bit later. Now, I do want to remind you that today um, we are talking about maritime education and also career opportunities. It's a webinar for learners. It's a webinar for Abanyabe Nuthambi who are interested ab about what this maritime is, but maybe you're not quite sure, or maybe you are nervous or lacking more information. Perhaps you know Baha'i, you don't know career. So today really um, our intention is to open up that. Um, I'd like to also talk to the youth who are struggling um, to get into the industry because they don't know how um, you want to do something and you are dedicated and you are ready, but you don't have certain requirements or skills and you don't know what it is, but you know that you want to do it. So this webinar is for you. It really is such a great initiative. Um, the maritime world itself is such a big con contributor to our economy to our nature and also as you'll find out to the lives of so many so really it is going to be a fantastic um, opportunity now what we are going to be doing throughout the webinar is giving you an opportunity perhaps you may have questions or you might have um, a comment or you want more information we do have a whatsapp line which is available so you can send your your whatsapps um this time you are allowed to take out your cell phones um during a session and just really connect um with the people behind that there's a team of different um experts and contributors who are behind um that um account and also will be bringing you um information so that number is zero six zero three four nine eight one nine five so the number is zero six zero three four nine eight one nine five but throughout 
um, the session, I will be just giving you um, that number throughout. Now, I do know that we are all connected and united virtually. It is still COVID, like it's still such a serious thing, which is why we had to bring this virtually because we understand. we go through this period and no one knows by there'll be another side so truly grateful um for this opportunity and also in such trying times to see transnet's contribution and um not being stopped by the present situations um becoming victims of circumstance they're saying here are other people our what it is that perhaps you may be interested in and this is what we are offering so i don't want to say much um i'd like to go to a video um and then when we come back i'll talk about in fact i'll introduce the panel when i was driving taxis i used to have a dream of mine because i didn't want to go back where i come from as a driver you have to learn to control all characters your duty is to take them from point A to point B safely. They don't know your background because they associate taxi driving with inferiority. They don't know that you are there for the sake of feeding your family. I was the first in the family to finish a metric. First in the family to end up in a university. But also that motivated me. It made me a very strong character. I got nominated as one of the person that were going to be in that pilot training. Then we went to Rotterdam in September of 1999. I became a pilot in Saldana. I worked as a pilot for a period of six to seven months. Then I got re relocated out of Saldana. 2002, the Harbour Master of the Port of East London decided he wants to take early retirement. And the leadership said, look, since you are there, why don't we appoint you as a harbour master? I said, but look, I don't think I'm ready for being a harbour master. I said, but there's no absolute science. Human beings are not, we cannot put them in the test tube and test them whether they, they're ready for this and that. Just get, take the job. While I was still entrenching myself in, in East London, I got a call. Guy, the harbour master of the port of Cape Town is retiring. I'm like, oh. We are, you are moving to come and be our master of the port of Cape Town. I said, but look guys, my career started in Cape Town in 1999, but now I'm going back as a leader of the port. I said, don't worry, pack and go. It was not easy when you get to Cape Town, especially when you find that you are going to be a leader of people that used to be your superiors. In 2007, I then the CEO also gave me a call. I was on leave. I remember my daughter has just been born. She was about 14 days old. I was on leave and the CEO calls me to say, hey, chief, I want to see you. Then he comes, he sits in that office. When he sits in that office, he says to me, chief, you know that we are doing restructuring in the organization. Uh, we feel like you are ready now to become the harbor master of the port of Deben. Okay, Devon is the biggest port. I said, yeah, but look, you've been East London for three years. You are now in Cape Town for three years. You have got six years experience as a harbour master. And we feel now is opportunity because the harbour master of the port of Devon is retiring. My goal when I took over as a chief harbour master, I said, look, it's for me to start a radical transformation of the harbour masters. Oh, man. Um, a man of firsts. You know, what I didn't mention before that video is that um, the man in the video is actually currently the acting chief operations officer um, 
which just goes to show when you are given opportunities, as he says, there are no absolute signs. Amatuba, like you, you doubt yourself, but you never know. You literally never know. And here he is being, as he said in the beginning of the video, the first ephemeliniake uamba ayo funda, the first estratu ensaike, the first uamba leche ni ayo. But there's just so so many um things that we have to get through. So that is just the way that we are kickstarting it. Now, I did say in the beginning um, that we have a panel of guests um, who really are from different worlds and are joining us also virtually and they're going to be telling you all about their own personal journeys um but joining us on the panel if i may just introduce them we have um Munandi um who is going to be telling us about her role um or rather TNPA's role in maritime education, as well as the various career opportunities um, that you may use as point of entries. Also, um, panel member number two is Komujo Mpathele. Um, she's a senior facilitator, and she's going to be highlighting the role of MSOE and the different service offering that um, are accessible to you guys. Now, we do know that the school has been successfully offering certification in Maria's marine careers rather um, for such a long time and they're really here to help fulfill your dreams as they have done for others. Um, and then our third panel member is um, Teresa Williams who is South Africa's first female marine pilot. Now she began her own studies um, as a port adversary student straight out of matric um, back in 1992. So this is such um, a, a, a gift to have on the panel. Now also we have panel um, captain Khadi Matlala, um, who is going to be talking about the other side of approaching your career because we all know that there are more than one ways of being um, of going towards your goals but one of those ways is actually getting um, mentorship so there are some people who assist you with mentorship and so captain khadi matlala is going to be telling us more about that and our fifth panel member is going to be um captain Bryn adamson who's actually from port um port of east london as the harbor master he's also going to be continuing um just talking more about mentorship, um, the personal touch, also the personal contribution it can add, and his own journey with that. So without wasting any more time, um, we are want to remind you, ukubana ninga tumela klamimi buzo enina yo okanye comments, ku WhatsApp number yetu 60 349 8195 JP number 060 Um because there's just so much information. Um it is being brought to you by real people, so it's not reading it from a textbook or this it's first hand experience. So buckle up, get ready. Uh, Thank you, Luto, and good morning to the ladies and gentlemen, the young people that have joined us today, and girls and boys. And in the marine environment. Very briefly, let me just take you through what TNPA or who TNPA is. TNPA is one of the six divisions of Transnet Soft Limited. And our main responsibility is to ensure that there is safe, efficient, and economic functioning of the ports across the coastline of, the, of South Africa. Um, as an authority, we are then landlords to the port users 
that are out there. We also provide the infrastructure and marine services, and commercial ports that we have across South Africa. And these ports are based in, are in Richards Bay, in Devon, in Saldana, in Cape Town, in Mossel Bay, in PE East London, as well as Wuha. Uh, over and above the eight ports, we have dredging services who are responsible to maintain the beds and ensure that the entry channels to the ports are, are cleared and uh, the vessels are able to, to, to dock at the ports. We also have a lighthouse and navigational services who are responsible to ensuring that those lighthouses out there are well maintained and they are functional. So um, how do we do this? We've got a number of critical skills that are key to ensuring that uh, TNPA operates efficiently within, the, within the, uh, the port system. We have tab masters as positions that are critical to ensuring operations in the ports happen. We've got harbor masters, deputy harbor masters. We've got helicopter pilots, and particularly night and day. We have uh, marine pilots, we've got engineers, we've got chief marine engineers, we've got general purpose ratings, uh, for short, GPRs. We also have chief engineers and masters in dredging services. Those are the captains of the crafts within the dredging services environment. So for us to get uh, people to be in these positions, how do we do that? We have to advertise um, positions that are at bargaining unit level, which is levels below management. So we advertise internally first to give opportunities to existing employees that are internal. And we also advertise externally when we cannot get the people. And then for management positions, we both uh, advertise internally and externally. And for you to be able to see those adverts, you can log on to our website register there and you will then be able to see what positions are available within transnet the entire transnet and specifically within tnpa there's a number of um, careers that you can get through as i've mentioned um, we have marine we have pipelines that become feeders to the various positions that we spoke about so within marine we've got feeders um, as marine cadets, we've got pipeline for marine cadets, we have pipeline for general purpose ratings, we have pipelines as well for marine pilots. So those are training programs that we have within TNPA and we do advertise externally for these um, cadet programs or GPR or even marine pilot programs. And we also have, we also ensure that for people to qualify, we will provide them with um, the, the support and the financial support that they need, including the sea time as well as ensuring that they have in-service training, particularly for in engineers as well, uh, yeah, uh, engineers in training and um, technicians in training. While you are a trainee, you are then allocated to a port which part will then absorb you into a position when there is a vacant position. However, we recognize that some people may want to explore outside of TNPA, so if they need to move out of TNPA, uh, then we will be training for the country and they can join other uh, shipping lines to explore other opportunities. I mentioned uh, dredging services in terms of their role, and it's a very specialized environment. And their training can take up to 15 years, um, but it ensures that people get qualifications that allows them to be able to sail in international waters. And that can be very exciting for some people um, because they would then be out there and see the world. Um, we also have careers in engineering. As I mentioned, we've got engineers in training as well as technicians in training. The engineering that we're looking at for those would be civil, your civil engineering, electrical, mechanical, as well as industrial. So it's a vast um, opportunity for those kind of engineering people and um, for them to get in as engineers in training through Transnet. We also have young professionals in training, which are not specifically for marine, 
but across all other portfolios within, TN, within Transnet. Um, so we do have a program um, for young professionals in training. The next career that we can talk about is the aviation career, where we can uh, we have a pipeline as well within the aviation uh, space. Um, we have a pipeline for Afri uh, aircraft maintenance engineers, AMEs. We have already absorbed six of them, and of the six, uh, three are African females. We've got a pool of trainee helicopter pilots. Five of those 12 are permanent night corps pilots. And then the rest would then be for day corps piloting. So there is a, um, a number of positions that do not have pipelines as we speak, but are critical positions. And we are looking into finding a pipeline for those kind of positions. For example, uh, your heli helicopter night pilot as well as a chief instructor pilot. Um, those are critical positions that we have and we are looking into having um, a pipeline then. TNPA has also, okay, TNPA also has in-house trading facility in the MSOE. Kumucho Mpashele, who's also one of the panel members, will take you through and elaborate on what MSOE has in terms of offerings. So, um, the female representation within the marine industry was previously male-dominated, but TNPA through Transnet has ensured that we've got more women that are within the marine environment. Um, the International Transport Workers Federation uh, informs us that women only comprise 2% of the global maritime workforce. And uh, the International Maritime Organization also says of the only one industry, and I'm aware of those. And just very briefly before I finish, um, just to inform you of the women in marine and what we have done to date, particularly for women, we've got a total of seven port managers, and of those seven port managers, three are females. We've got seven uh, harbour masters, of those three are females. Deputy harbour masters are nine, six are females. Marine pilots, we've got 83, 27 are females. Uh, tag masters, we've got 73, and 26 of them are females. So we've got 36% to date of uh, men that are in, in, the, in the marine environment, and they are doing a, putting a personal touch for women um, in the jobs that they are doing. Um, I would then head over to, I think, uh, the program director will take us through what uh, Homuja will then elaborate on in terms of the NSO if, um, offerings. Thank you. Wow, I love that, um, Mamunandi, especially La Patika City, that TNPA gives you the support so that you may be able to sail into international waters. I absolutely love that. Um, and also it's quite interesting to find out how many careers and also opportunities and pipelines are available um, in the maritime education and career vocational um, routes. Maritime um, is only limited to Elwandle, like can see, but there's just so much more. And also the role that TNPA um, plays towards maritime education is just really providing critical skills. And as Uma Munandi said, so that people can be able to be captains of their crafts um, through their training programs, um, their financial support, and also a big factor because these aren't all to you, but the fact that Ikona in service training that then says that there's not just one way for you to get your way um, and she did give out a website um, which also reminds me that this is being recorded and a web link will be provided um, at a later stage so 
or our Transnet's website for more information and also the different levels that are available. Um, now let's move on to panel member number two, um, Humu John Pasela, who's going to be highlighting the role of MSOE as well as the service offerings and how these are accessible. Now, MSOE is a school that has successfully offered um, certification in marine um, careers since the year 1991. So it's helped really to fulfill the dreams of thousands of students and who knows, it may just help you. So, um, Osko Mujo, um, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Luto. And, uh I just want to say hello to everyone, all the learners, the young people that are tuning in from everywhere across the country. Um, COVID-19, I'm sure, has brought upon to you um, a great deal amount of anxiety in terms of um, your future prospects and planning and trying to decide what is it that you want to do with the rest of your life. Uh, but um, the decision obviously has to begin now while you are still in high school and figuring out exactly how you're going to map this out. And um, uh, we are here now talking to you about uh, maritime careers and uh, shedding some light and, and some info with regards to how you can penetrate this uh, um, uh, industry. Um, my name is Kumujom Pasele. I am from Limpopo. I was raised and born and raised there in a village. Um, and so I'm pointing this out to, to you because I know some of you are sitting there somewhere in the back of um, a, a KZN in the rurals, in Limpopo, in the rurals, um, across the country, thinking uh, there is, what are the chances of you getting out there and uh, I'm just saying to you that I am, I'm here, and so can you. You can be here. It is possible. So this is a platform where we are going to share with you how you can, you can be able to do this. I work for Transnet National Ports Authority at the Maritime uh, School of Excellence, and um, where we basically conduct training for the uh, individuals who have had success um, in completing their university education and now they are looking to basically um, uh, enter the work environment within the port operations. And, and so the various offerings within the port operations that are offered by MSOE are, the, are theory based and you are still really uh, required to complement that with some uh, uh, practical skills so that you can then go on to qualify as, as a, your desired choice of, 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 um, of career. We also offer um, the um, uh, cargo handling training as well um, at MSOE, uh, not just the, 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 the careers that are on the ship. You are also on the dry side. We offer cargo handling uh, 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 um, job opportunities, which are also um, advertised. Would, would also be advertised um, on the on the Transnet um, website. The type of careers that are offered at MSOE. Once you've come through university um, uh, with your maritime studies uh, uh, education. Um, towards a, a navigation officer. I think the entry requirements for your maritime studies as well as your engineering studies, my, one of my colleagues will elaborate a little bit further on that in terms of how do you get into that. So you would have gone to sea as well and completed the practical training on board the ship. And then, uh, then you, come, you come to the leg uh, um, uh, for, for your port operations training. We offer uh, the theoretical pilot training as well as the ship handling pilot training uh, which is done on, 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 on simulator and then from then on you go on to do your practicals on board the ships that are coming in and out of the port then you will become a, a marine pilot. You can also come and do your theory as a tug master at MSOE 
and then from there you go on to do your practicals in the court on board a tag where you will then be certified as a tug master. You can also become a skipper of a smaller vessel, uh, which is under 200 gross tonnage as well. Again, the theory you will complete it at MSOE. And then from there, you will then do your practicals in the port. We have your GPR, which is split up into three components. That is your able seafarer theory your able uh, on deck and able seafarer theory on in the engine side and also uh, steering and lookout. This is where you learn to steer a ship and it's done on a simulator. Both uh, 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 theoretical and simulator training is done at MSOE and then from there you go on to do your practicals. You can do that on board a vessel that is foreign going. You can also do that on board uh, um, port operation uh, uh, ships. Also pipe operator tra uh, 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 training which is for people who are working on board dredgers who are operating something called a um, a suction tube or a pipe which uh, uh, basically sucks up the, the, the material and puts it on board. We do that uh, on a simulation training at MSOE. There are other various uh, uh, list of careers. It's a long list. We don't have enough time, but please make some time and go onto our website and check out all of these offerings and um, choose exactly what is it that you wish to, to embark on and uh, make a decision to uh, regarding the career that could last, uh, that could really take you out of the situation that you are currently on, and also to alleviate some of the anxieties that you may be having with regards to what you want to do with the rest of your uh, of your life. Um, um, also, just want to say as well, if you want to focus again, if if you don't necessarily want to work on board the ships. And, uh, but you want to, rem to, to consider a career within the maritime industry and you probably may be engaging in a trade, uh, uh, like your fitting and turning, boiler making, uh, etc., e e electrical uh, engineering, etc. There are opportunities on board ships as well uh, that you can, um, uh, 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 that you can uh, uh, work towards. Um, the offshore and, and offshore oil and gas industry is very uh, generous with such opportunities as well. So do go out there, explore um, uh, what you can do in the interim. If you're still in uh, Standard Seven, what is Standard Seven? Grade Nine, is it? Um, focus on your mathematics and your science proper mathematics and your, 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 your physical science so that you will then be able to uh, put, be in a better position to gain a university entry or, or any inst higher institution of higher learning will be able to accept you to be able to, 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 um, to, to take up these um, uh, 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 career choices. Um, I'm not sure if I left anything, but we will be taking questions after that. Uh, and uh, respond to them. Our pro program director will be able to pose uh, those questions to us and we will be available to answer as many questions as you can. We are available as well as, um, uh, on, on, as well on the WhatsApp number that was shared earlier on. Please ask as many questions. This is a perfect uh, platform for you to do all of that. We are here for this. Thank you very much. Wow, yo, um, that was truly uplifting. Um, and clearly, Usikumujo was pursuing black excellence way before it became a Twitter jajarach term. I mean, just from a way she's presenting herself to her saying that the decision begins in high school. And she clearly knew, being from Elimpopo as Lalini, uh, that that was not going to be where her story ends. And so she decided to steer her own very ship. I also like the fact that um, she spoke about the different training um, offered, but also the avenues, because training is not focused. Once you've done some, um, studied something that you didn't really know about, you then later on battle um, 
either find your work, either advancing in your career. So it really is um, an important point that she said that in order to be able to steer your own very ship, you need to have the correct training. And they offer everything from theory to practical experience on the port. Um, and also another point, which I think is quite important that she said, uh, is focusing on imads in a physical science and Riawati proper maths. And I think what we can take away from that is that you just doing your your subjects for the sake of just getting that simple mark. But if you are really intent and also Uzmisele now um where's the place each and I is starting in around grade nine Although it's never too late, but mastering it, even now, whether you find yourself, perhaps you are in a, in first year or in second year, mastering your craft means you're constantly working at, at it. And if she can come all those years from Limbabwe and still have the passion, the excellence, and also the growth in her own very um, path, um, which is, she's just offered, it then goes to say that Abatuba Akona. Um, and just one last highlight from what she said to Sis Komoja is the fact that if Clown B, we are full of exploration in the marine, but you're not quite sure, or when you perhaps were you go by Semanzini because some, not everyone um, wants to be there. Um, is it Akona, Amanye, Amatuba? Right now, though, um, uh, I think little shaba masi kubeke again in kubo yetu. I can see the WhatsApps um, that are coming through, and you know, keep them coming. We are going to um, we'll be reading some of them out. We're going to be posing some of them to our panel, um, and if you've got that moment whereby we have um dear theater, kaleza utumelelo WhatsApp. Um, because we are going to be giving them some time afterwards to speak. Um, thank you so much, Wena, Sis Khomojo. Goku, Sis Akubekeka, with Inkubo talking with our, introducing rather, our next panel member, um, Teresa Williams. Now, Teresa was South Africa's first female marine pilot. Um, and Istoris got Teresa, she inspired Risha because she started her own studies um, as a portnet, um, sorry, bursary student straight out of matric um, way back in 1992. But I think she'll do a better story of um, telling you exactly her journey than I can even try. Um, really inspiring, really uplifting, and also a groundbreaking moment, especially coming out Queer Women's Month and what is going on um, in the world right now. But with that said, um, Teresa, over to you. Thank you very much, Program Director. It's really wonderful for me to be here today. And um, I'm so excited to be part of this speaking panel. Um, I have a passion for youth, so this is really the highlight of my month and possibly my year. Um, Ms. Mpatlele already touched on a number of issues related to training, and I will just um, expand on that further. So, in sharing with you my presentation of today, and um, to just take you through my journey, and where it all started for me. So the, the, the points I will be taking you through is in terms of the benefits derived from Transnet investment in maritime education. And I will specifically speak as a Transnet bursary beneficiary. I'll briefly touch on my career and specifically share with you my personal journey and also the career opportunities outside of the port logistics and how COVID-19 has impacted maritime education and training, in fact, globally. So the picture you're looking at now and the, the happy faces are of the students who are attending our courses at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. So Transnet invested in me more than 20 years ago and um, in 1993, I received a Transnet bursary and I qualified for it because I had 
grade 12 maths and science that is pure maths and the bursary allowed me to study at Cape Peninsula University of Technology towards a national diploma in maritime studies and in 1998 I became a ship navigation officer in 2000 I became a tugboat captain through the training offered by Transit National Ports Authority and in 2001 I became a marine pilot and um, Transnet, what I, what I like about um, what Transnet does in the investment is that it instills in one a lifelong passion for learning and I didn't just stop at being a marine pilot, I continued with my MBA studies and I'm also studying towards my PhD now and ultimately um, all of this contributed towards being able to sit in my hot seat as the head of department of Maritime Studies and the Survival Center at Cape Peninsula University of Technology. But so where did it all start for me? You can see me in the picture um, more than about two decades ago, my very first day as a marine pilot in the background. That ship there is the very first ship I piloted. Uh, her name is or was the Sea Pride um, on that day in May 2001. So where did it all start for me, guys? I mean, I look all put together today and um, the opportunities <laughs> that I've been afforded has really um, done a lot for me in my life. And I'm very thankful and humbled by the opportunities by TNPA. But where did it start? So you see two pictures there. You see one of a caravan and you see one of a shack. So for me, my journey started in the 70s when I was born in March in the caravan. So at the time um, of the hospitals um, for certain people in the country uh, was in fact a caravan. So this hospital, this caravan was on the grounds of Bishop Blavis Community Hospital and um, I was born there and from that hospital my mom took me home to the shanty. So my parents have and still have very little formal education but Whilst we were growing up as kids, my parents were determined to at least be able to read and write um, and, you know, learn basic um, things related to, to, to schooling. And they would go to night school. So when I, by the time I was going to day school, my, both my mom and dad went to night school. And I'm really grateful for, for that, um, for what they modeled in my life. And um, so I don't know what pocket money is. So while I was growing up, my mom taught me how to sew and I was selling the clothes I was making on flea markets. And I was also selling sweets um, after school. And even when I got a bursary from Transnet, because it didn't cover my travel at the time, I was, I was selling after school on the flea markets and on weekends um, for my travel and for my toiletries. And um, so... The way my life started, um, I mean, it didn't end like that. And for sure, I didn't get stuck there. And as I said, I received a bursary and I'm a person with big dreams. And I've always wanted to see beyond Table Mountain. And I didn't allow the circumstances of my birth to determine where I would be one day or for it to define me. And that is when I made a choice that I would work hard and with the opportunity that I was given in terms of the bursary, I knew it was the one chance because my parents couldn't afford to pay for my education for me. And so the very department that I'm head of department of now is where I studied and the programs that we're currently offering are the Bachelor of Nautical Sciences and the Bachelor of Marine Engineering. And from next year, we will be offering an extended curriculum program, which is a bridging program onto either Bachelor of Nautical Science or Bachelor of Marine Engineering. And to gain entry into these programs, you need pure maths, 50% minimum, for the bachelor uh, programs. And for the bridging program, if you were not able to achieve uh, above 50%, um, above minimum, above 40%, would then be the minimum entry requirement. You need physical science 
and also technical maths and science are accepted now but at a higher percentage on entry requirement than the pure maths and the pure science as you can see the slide is quite self-explanatory you can always post other questions later so in terms of the careers in the maritime sector, if you choose those career paths and you decide to, to, st to start your studies in terms of the bachelor degrees on offer, you can work within the port industry, you can follow my own career path, you can become a pilot, tugboat captain and work in offshore. You can also study towards becoming a professor. So you can stay in academia and um, become a lecturer eventually and professor and replace me here uh, as head of the department one day at CPUT. You can also use those qualifications to go into industry, become a ship navigating officer, um, get involved in marine engineering, power plants, and even in the fishing industry. Or you can work on land in terms of marine operations, become a manager like a number of the panelists, and even go into the legal aspects of maritime. And also there are environmental um, aspects. So what are of the career opportunities? As a youngster, the question you should be asking yourself while you're at, at high school, you need to start reading your newspapers and start seeing what is the need in the world? What solutions can you create for the world? What does it need? If you look around you, you will see that there are, we, are, we are battling as, as a global community with challenges related to global warming. Also in terms of the impact that shipping has on the environment in terms of marine pollution. Carbon emissions, you can see when ships are moving or when a car is moving, what is coming out of the exhaust is what it's emitting. So that's an emission. So there's, there's water shortages around the world. So you can think of ways to bring some icebergs, floating icebergs to South Africa and how the else is, it can be melted to, to resolve our water situations. Yes, there's a lot of rain falling now and the dams are full, but again, you know, life is a cycle. We probably need water again at some point. Um, energy, ships are a great source of energy to store energy, areas of research in that as well. And I'm sure you've heard this buzzword, fourth industrial revolution, and, and in some of your curricula, it's already covered in high school. So you can research in terms of what's the impact of shipping sizes, how that impacts the size of a ship, the number of people that is required on a ship, how people need to be retrained on board vessels, and also investigate your smart technology, your smart ports. And because technology is advancing so much, being on a ship, is not as physically intensive as it was in my day when I was serving as a cadet on board a ship or as an officer. It was very physically intensive then, but now technology has really made it that uh, it's a lot of the, 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 the outputs on board is about a push button system and it's definitely a lighter weight, but you can create something um, that can even improve on existing technologies. So, now, in terms of talking about technology, the impact of COVID-19 has brought on a situation that has fast-tracked um, technological advances, where one might have thought, you know, um, we, we won't be teaching online, even you as students now, a lot of the times in some of your schools where it's capable, it's possible, you've been learning online. And how has that impacted on the academic year for education? In fact, globally, there's been a shift in the academic year. So the 2020 academic year is finishing probably January, February next year. Um, but what have we done? What are we trying? We needed to shift a whole program from on campus to online. Our biggest challenges has been um, trying to help our students who are in remote areas, in remote village, where they don't have devices, where they don't have connectivity, and even sometimes somebody maybe have data, but the network doesn't support them to be able to use that data effectively. And so we've needed to print material and to send it to them for them to be able to participate. But for sure, one of the things we've also learned is that face-to-face -face 
cannot be replaced that easily. Um, our students really miss the interaction with us, the interaction with the lecturers to be able to ask questions face to face. But I must say the youngsters has really come on board and it's something you can also do to just be open to, to what the situation is asking of you right now, probably in this moment in history and to see how you can be adaptable in that regard. And my last slide, guys, because I really want to stick to the time. Um, there's our email address. Our applications for next year is closing at the end of this month. And in summarizing a whole life into nine slides. So I've been able to, to go beyond the limits, the circumstances of my birth because I've had help. I've been able to stand on other people's shoulders to help me. I've received help. I've received mentorship. I've received coaching um, to be able to, to, to break walls, to break barriers, and to become. Um, I'm, I'm happy that I've, I didn't remain the first or an only. There are so many women now in the port system um, all over doing the kind of jobs that previously only men did or where I was, was, was but one or two at the time. So what is important for you? We all have a story. You need to write your own story and you need to rewrite your story. Ask for help. Be adept. Times are requiring of you right now. Be willing to work hard to achieve your dreams. Do not just show up and expect to be given something. Put your weight in it. Get your hands dirty and be proud of your ultimate achievement when you've achieved it. I thank you. Over to you, Program Director. Sorry, I can't hear you, Program Director. Hello. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, it's all these WhatsApps that you are sending distracted me. Keep them coming. Um, we are reading them. We are getting your WhatsApps. Keep them coming. We are going to have a moment. Um, but Teresa, I mean, just going back to what you were talking about. Firstly, when I saw that first picture, that first slide, um, I thought you were just posing behind the ship. I didn't know that actually you'd be the one steering that ship. So that on its own is crazy because we live in such... Um, instant gratification times, instant manje manje, you know, you think something's going to happen like this. And when you say your story um, started there, but it didn't, it didn't stop there. It goes to show that truly it's another important thing that you need to know where it is that you're going. Um, but also one of the things that you were talking about is reading the newspaper. I think we are so engrossed, especially young people are so engrossed on the conversations, which are quite social and, and nice, which happen on social media, but you don't do your research. You don't know um, what's out there. You don't know what it is that is lacking. And when you say, that you need to ask, do, do your research, read the newspapers, find your own innovation, but also ask the question about what do you bring to the table? You know, so many times we, we succumb to the pressures or the conversation of what is so-and-so going to do for me or what is government going to do for me. I think what Teresa did really point out and is so important is that you need to master um those those certain skills again um mathematics and she gave you the website for um for for more information but make sure that you start now go on the website after this check out zitina requirements because she did say it with valango december don't wait um immerse yourself because we've seen people and then at the very last minute,
lastly, to highlight um, what Teresa was talking about, about the, the training that is available within the maritime sector. Such a, it's such an important thing to know what's out there than to just do slambi indo oive in passing ogani wunga ya zanga information they need because you didn't do your research. But I mean, just going from a, a marine pilot right through to academia, as she was saying, whether ufumba a lecturer, a teacher, a professor, um, on the industry, on land, there's those options as well, you know. And she was also just talking about um, a navigation officer, somebody who who likes taking those sort of decisions and and steering um, the ship. Um, then those there, there are those. There's a ship captain, you know. So it needs the easy, and I think that's what we're getting so far. Um, is the fact that career opportunities and also offerings are quite boundless. Um, but to continue with the program. So thank you so much, Teresa, for that. Um, I want to move on to our next panel member, um, Captain Khadi um, Matala, who is going to be talking about a different avenue um, in, and also an offering, which sometimes is not really focused on because Amanda Bayazi and Gamanya Matlesha, we get so caught up on the professional expertise, but there's so many other ways that can support you um, in Lela, Oti, whether you are studying some of the high school or the university, and especially class class sevens, and also towards the advancement of your your career and your profession, you're gonna need people. Like I think. That's another thing that COVID has taught us is the fact that um, nothing just happens on its own. And I mean, I can only oh, feel for the young people who are going through this, you know, because you've got your futures ahead of you. Um, and Gamanyama Klesha, that can be so overwhelming that you need any support. Um, and it's not a support that you can read from Inguati or Ganye. With the glass ceiling, you, you, you need a connection. Um, and so Captain Khadi is going to be talking to us about Eight one nine five. It's zero six zero three four nine eight one nine five. Um, I'm checking up on you guys. Yeah, and if you ask Nisa, Nisa Fresh, Nintati Notesy, um, because I'm sitting here and I'm discovering just so much. And also, what's been so refreshing um, about this webinar is the women who have been talking, like from the go get, and you wouldn't think. Um, and I, and I don't mean to be sexist, but you wouldn't. There'd be so many strong, formidable, powerful, um, and also really astute women. It's not my bonke about Teta. We're not just talking um, in, in, in for a press release. These are experiences that they've gone through. And what makes it exciting is that from Limpopo all the way to the township, I mean, Ikaraven, come on. These are experiences that we can all relate to, you know. So, there are so many opportunities that are um, available. Um, right now, um, and over to you, Captain Khadi. Thank you, Lito, for the warm introduction. Good morning to all the learners. My name is Khadi Matlala. I'm the Harbour Master in the Port of East London. Uh, my role, I'm responsible for pilotage, navigation, and safety of vessel within the port limits. I joined um, Maritime Studies in 2004. I'm from Limpopo. I didn't know anything about Maritime Studies until I applied for a bazaar. In 2004, I went to Durban University of Technology to study Maritime Studies. In 2005 and 6, I went to sea. That is where I did my cadetship with Safe Marine. 2007, I passed my orals with SAMSA 
and I was then qualified as a DEC officer. I moved to the port of PE where I started my training as a training tag master. I worked in PE as a tag master, marine pilot, and deputy harbor master. In December 2018, I moved to the port of East London harbor master. During that period, I, I received mentorship from um, amazing leaders. Uh, there was no formal mentoring program, but they took me under their wing and molded me to be the person that I am today. One of them is Desmond Basson. He is a marine technical manager in the port of PE. I worked with him as a, as a tag master and training tag master. Desmond, he taught me a lot about port and tag operation because at the time I only had a C background as a reference. And he taught me how to manage and work with crew because I was only 23. The people I was working with, they were very old and most of them were men at the time. Time. So he taught me how to work well with the crew and also the admin side of of of, of the harbour master's job. I mean the tag master's job because at the time I was more focused on the technical aspect and as a result I think that paved my way in becoming a deputy harbour master and a harbour master. The other person is Golisa Bekisa. She is a marine operations manager in the port of Ngocha. But at the time, I worked with her as a tag master and a pilot. She was the first female pilot in the port of PE. And I think as the first person, they really deal with a lot of challenges as the first lady. So when I came in, she was ready to mentor me. She always encouraged me to do bigger vessels because I only had a smaller license. So I was only focusing on ships that were within my license. She always encouraged me to do bigger ships and as a result, I obtained my open license quicker in the port of PE. The next is one of our panelists and one of the most amazing leader I know is Captain Bren Adamson. He is the harbor master in the port of PE. I worked with him for almost eight years. Initially, I was a pilot and he was a harbor master, but he would do some jobs with me. He always gave feedback after every single job that we did together. But what I've learned a lot about him is as a leader, he, 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 he wanted um, everyone in the department to win. He always created a conducive environment for us to grow. He encouraged us to study, to apply for bursaries, and also gave us opportunity to act as a deputy harbour master and eventually harbour master. And uh, he played a crucial role in me becoming the harbour master and the person that I am today. So I am grateful. Uh, to the young people out there, I'm saying um, there is a lot of guidance and opportunities. So it is important that you work very hard, you enjoy the process, and you also ask for assistance. There are a lot of experts in the maritime field, and they are willing to assist. I'm grateful for all the opportunities that I was given. I'm grateful for the support and guidance I've received uh, through from a lot of the marine and harbor masters, the port leadership, especially in the Eastern Cape. <coughs> Yeah, so for me, I think that is basically it to our mentors. Thank you so much for always taking your time out during your busy schedules. We come to your offices and you've always been willing to assist and give us proper guidance. Thank you. Well, thank you, um, Captain Khadi. You know, Mentorship and one of the things that you stressed out was the importance of leadership and guidance. Um, and I think above that, it's when you said ask for assistance because Abantu are, are there, the right people are, are willing to give you that assistance, especially in maritime. Um, and I see that already from, which is quite interesting to note that as a young, um, as, as a young professional, there were already people reaching out, which I suppose goes to show um, good maritime 
um, world, how the collectiveness and also the support, the growth, because it's such a, a unique field on its own that you really somehow end up needing to get information, to get a lending hand, um, and also to be assisted. Um, shout out to my people in the Eastern Cape, um, who were also our next panel member is um, is from Captain Bryn Addison is going to just touch base on his own journey, um, and I am aware, well aware of time, so we are going to. He is our last um, panel member, and then we will be asking those questions. Um, but just before he speaks, because he is our final speaker, before I throw it back to you guys, I remind you that number for WhatsApp's Zenu um, zero six zero. Um, our fifth and final panel member. Um, he's a harbour master, um, Port of East London. And yeah, Captain Bryn, over to you. My captain. <laughs> good, afternoon. good afternoon, Luto. Um, really, really humbling experience. Thanks, thanks, Luto. Um, um, good morning to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to the learners, especially. Thanks for taking the time out to 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 listen to us and and can um, really shape your career. So thanks to to the people also that has put this together. Um, I think um, you know this is um, for for Transnet and TNPA. It's really our our Maritime um, Heritage Month where we try and showcase you know where we've come from and what we've achieved over. A long time it seems now but um, you know back then you you were just going about doing what you needed to do so the program director thanks so much I'm mindful of the time um, colleagues and and, and uh, learners my name is Bryn Adamson I'm the harbour master in the port of Port Elizabeth um, as Luto says we we homies um, colleagues uh, my, my, my name is Bryn I'm from Port Elizabeth and um, born and bred in Galvindale I think um, <laughs> yeah so so um yeah thank thank goodness i think all of us share some of the stories um of our backgrounds and where we come from i i resonate with what uh, my colleagues have shared i'm inspired by listening to their stories um thank goodness for for parents um to the young listeners out there thank goodness for our parents that have inspired us that has pushed us to, to, to achieve and to go in a direction that was really unknown to all of us, I think. Um, so, so yes, my mother was a drive behind me, my, the start of my career. Believe it or not, my father was a fisherman in the same very port that I'm the harbour master of today. So, um, you know, that is where I started, um, um, you know, with my father being a fisherman. And um, my career started in 1995. I was a Chapman pupil. Um, at uh, uh, the school locally here, and I think Theresa will know, um, Ms. Williams will know the way it all started in Wingfield Technical College. We did a bridging course, and I'm and I'm really pleased to hear that um, um, the Cape Tech is also offering that bridging course now because that is really what I think um, you know the gap in the market is, and 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 um, the Cape Tech has really picked that up. Um, um, to, to, to have that um, bridging course. So, so I'm glad to see that she shared that. Um, you introduced Captain Lakala in the video um, 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 as we started, Luto. And um, that is also where my career started with Captain Lakala. You will remember us living in a dormitory in the naval base in Wingfield Technical College, you know, and um, the soldiers having chased us around there. So, uh, you know, with Captain Lakala and myself, that was our humble beginnings. That's where it all started. Uh, but now um, I sit on a panel with um, Theresa Williams, who is the HOD of the very school that we went to, you know, together uh, with myself being here. So to the learners, anything is possible. And, and, you know, if you put your mind to it, you seize the opportunities, you can go very far. 
similar to uh, my colleagues, I've also been with Saf Marine um, and done some sea time with him. Um, I then, after spending some time at sea, uh, I, I, I joined the port of Port Elizabeth, fortunate enough to be in my hometown. And um, it's not always the case, but um, um, I was fortunate enough to join the port of PE, where I grew up similar to um, Captain Hardy as a tugboat master, as a pilot, and as a deputy harbour master. And um, man, this is really where one learns about, you know, the actual work, what goes on. You go to tech, you study, you go to sea, you study, and you come back and you still know nothing. So, so it's really, um, you know, it starts here in the port of PE. I must admit, you know, I am privileged and humbled in, um, you know, having been part of a team here that, that has created the platform for, for youngsters to um, um, be able to immerse themselves in the opportunities that the port provides, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, as I say, I was a, eventually a harbour master in this port and um, it's very inspiring to see um, as we share our story and our maritime heritage that the efforts, the conscious efforts of our leadership that has um, really um, transformed the maritime industry in a way that we could never imagine as youngsters. Um, I think Teresa was pointing out that now, um, or I think Komoto was pointing out that um, with 36% females, um, um, uh, Sisnandi um, um, was sharing some statistics. When I joined, we had one female, you know, and that was Miss Williams. So, so it's it's really, really inspiring. We've come a long way, um, but but Luthor, I think let me just share some of um, you know Captain Hardy was too kind. <laughs> she was too kind um, in in uh, sharing a story with me. Um, you know, um, and of our our relationship in the port of PE, really mentorship and coaching, and you know, I think I think the colleagues that spoke before us mentioned the fact that you know. It's, it's, it's not about your academics and, 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 you know, what you bring to the table, but it's about the relationships and the, and the people that shape you, um, um, how, we are, you know, every day in your job is different. Every day there's different challenges. It's important that you resonate with people that have walked the journey before. You know, um, um, there's, there's many of mentors, people that were mentors to me. Um, um, and um, most of the harbour masters on the coast today will tell you about the, our mentors. Um, Captain Eddie Bremner, I can fondly think of. He was, man, this guy. And, and, and when I think of a mentor, I, I always say to myself, I want to be like him because this guy created the environment, um, Luto. He created the environment. He, was, he took interest in what it is that you wanted to achieve. So, so what is it that, uh, you know, makes good mentors? Uh, you know, I think it's a person that resonates with the youngsters. So I'm sure they have teachers, um, you know, out there. I'm sure it, could, it doesn't have to be your class teacher. It can be that biology teacher down the road, you know. It can be your pastor. It can be a neighbor. But, but this person must be able to see your blind spots, must be able to push you to the next level. And um, this person must have vested interest in you, Luto, and I'm sure they can share, and I'm sure they know of somebody that has, you know, um, that has that, um, that sees the good in them and that wants that, and that wants better for them. So I think that is what they need to look out for. Um, it's that person that they can freely share their challenges with, that they can open up and say, you know what? Today, I, I was listening to, to somebody in Transnet, but I think I want to be a ship captain one day, you know, and this person must be able to take that dream forward, you know. So, so as a mentor, look, I think Captain Hardy was, yes, we worked very closely, but she, you know, I know she, she left the port on many days, you know, probably not a happy camper. But I think it's in, in pushing people and giving and making, you know, life a little bit difficult. It's, it's, it's through those difficult and challenging times that we grow. That's when we see real growth, you know. The saying is, and the mariners will share with us that, you know, come waters, don't make a competent sailor. So, so, so you know, you want to push people through the stormy weathers 
and make sure they come out they are fully equipped and i think captain khadi i can today say you know is fully equipped on the other side of the bay in uh, the port of east london as a harbour master today um, but she made my life easy she is eager she was willing to learn she 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 is a self starter before you can throw the training and development at her she's already started on her own and and i think you know that to me is 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 you know the people that makes life easy to 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 teach and provide training all you do is make uh, provide the platform for them and they automatically excel so captain khadi well done and um, but but definitely um, luto the 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 opportunities the platform that transnet creates and provides um, um, is phenomenal all our panel members have shared similar stories it is really phenomenal and um, to the learners i can leave them with snap up the opportunities you know seize the moments also you know bring the correct attitude your attitude determines how far you go it's not your academics it's not you know um um many things that you think it is but it's how your attitude how how much you want it um so i think that is uh, my story to um Um, my colleagues around the coast i know there's many harbor masters that are mentors to many people in their different ports but this is how we see the ports grow and the port system grow lots of thanks well well thank you captain um i mean from being a son of a fisherman um in galvin which is down the road because i'm from sydney um to to being where you are at and you know what is truly also inspiring and also to prove that you are telling the truth in testimony is that captain khadi just spoke prior and was speaking about what you did for her and for you to come at the very end of um this talk really and as you say snap up the moment like you can't wait or doodle daddle or or doubt yourself when the moment comes you've got to prepare yourself and just lastly what um captain brin spoke about is that you need, you need to find someone who resonates with you and this person needs to have a vested interest in you so ngamanya mazwi I need to bangu tishara wako hlabi ngomnye utishara kwalapha esikolweni okanye um ngumfundisi wasecaweni okanye umuntu wokuy community but lando yobane mentor ngamanye amaxesha incede kakhulu because izinto that let's say wena bungakwazi uzine uzenza ngokwakho yakwazi ukhuthaza um but I do know that we are running um out of time but because they tell different ubuza imibuzo that you guys can ask questions um the first question is for when i'm not in it hi there i'm jody terry muleshi um grade 11 um at low hill maritime center so um her questions or his questions are what is the work environment and culture like at transnet and what are the divisions within transnet so i'll i'll say maybe you can answer the first one umana in jan work environment um and culture what's it like the work environment and culture yes at transnet um the 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 environment in transnet it is a welcoming environment uh, it is a teaching environment where people that are determined to make it in the workplace people that are hard workers are recognized so uh, it's also up to the individual and as captain bill was talking about how easy it was with captain um eh uh, hadi how easy it was to work with um with her uh, it makes it much easier when you are a hard worker when you are determined and you know what your goal is and there is lots of support that you can get from senior people for mentors that can be allocated to you for coaches that can be allocated to you to assist you in your journey while you are a trainee And I think the second question was about the divisions of transnet. 
We have Transport Freight Rail, the one of our rail division. We also have um, Transport uh, Port Terminals, which are terminals that are used for ports. We also have Transport Engineering, which is maintenance of our rail fleet that we have. We also have a CMPA that I've mentioned, and we also have pipelines. Uh, which is for the pipeline for the fuel uh, between the different uh, ones that to, to get them into other areas. Um, we also have Transnet Property Division, uh, which is taking care of the divisions across the organization. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Really dynamic. Um, I think this one is for you. Oti um, Obagisho. Um, I've come across the Transnet Maritime School of Excellence and have been searching for ways to apply, but with no luck. Please help me in this regard. Thank you. Can okay. We... Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the the courses at MSOE. Um, are basically available to just about everyone. However, there are minimum entry requirements that you have to fulfill. For example, you cannot come straight out of university and want to become a marine pilot. There is a series of legs that you have to complete in before you can even be entered onto a pilot training program. Uh, for tag master training program is the same. You complete your university, you go out to sea, complete your cadet ship, uh, get your certificate of competence by uh, uh, SAMSA, and then only then you will be able to uh, uh, get enrolled for for your tag master training. And that also, um, this is once you. Um, it, it's much easier if you enter through the, 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 the bursary, bursary scheme. Uh, your skipper port operations as well. Um, this is open to everybody straight out of metric with your mathematics and science. It doesn't have to be 50% or 60%. As long as you have uh, uh, ability to compute, uh, work out uh, mathematical solutions and physical science solutions, you should be able to enter onto this skipper port ops uh, uh, theory, and and so you will be able to then commence the training. But this is only theory at the Maritime School of Excellence. Make sure that then you have secured your practical training with a, a port operations shipping company or any other shipping companies that might have been able to assist you. The costly. Yeah to try and do this on your own. And ship owners are not going to accept you if you don't have at least the minimum requirements. So for you to be able to apply for any of this, um, please contact us. Um, uh, send an email to um, uh, tobilemai.maisa at transnet.net. Request the information. The information will then be filtered down to 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 um, the respective departments, where we can then assist you with the minimum requirements and the cost fees as well if you're coming in privately. But otherwise, if you're coming through the bursary uh, uh, scheme uh, that is sponsored by Transnet, then your training manager within that port will be able to take you through all of this. I hope I did answer the question. I, I really think you do. And to be honest, um, I now understand why they struggled with it because it's such a lot of information, um, which goes to show that you really need to do your research. You know, you need to know your story. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take two more questions because of time. Um, this one says, okay, let me try and ask a different panelist. Um, okay, a... Here's one who's a nautical science um, educator, um, Mr. Mbiyane. He says, what are criteria for getting bursary for grade 12 students? Okay, for grade is there, 12 is there, 
Yeah, grade 12. Is there perhaps a website that you, you can just, that we can add maybe um, towards the end or like an admin email for those involved in this, in, in this conversation? Yes, I do suggest that our organizers go uh, on, on, the, on, the, on this uh, stream. Please type in uh, the Transnet uh, Careers uh, link as yeah. well as the Transnet Bursary link where people can then apply for bursaries. Um, also for opportunities within Transnet, register your profile on the Transnet Careers website because there are a lot of scammers out there who are selling job opportunities, who are selling uh, training opportunities, such things. You can only be able to access these opportunities once you have a profile registered on the Transnet website and, uh, and, and uh, uh, keep, keep an eye on any opportunities that are being advertised. Okay, and nothing, will, Transnet will not send you a, 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 an email that tells you about the minimum requirement, oh sorry, the, 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 the minimum salary going to earn and they will not be um, uh, asking you for additional uh, fee that you have to pay uh, for your application form or for your training or accommodation or anything of the sort. So be sure. wary yeah. of scammers out there. So to be safe, to safeguard yourself and your personal information, go on the Transnet Careers, register a profile there, and then because you have an email address, whenever an opportunity that suits uh, the, 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 your area of interest is being advertised, it will then flag up in your email address, and then you will be able to apply through that secure system. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. And also heads up, because the, you become so desperate to get um, or something that you, you put on your blinders and uh, you, people will fool you and people will take you for a ride. So make sure you follow your due diligence. It's that whole thing of when you want something, you, you follow up step by step by step. Um, Captain Khadi, um, a question for you. Uti, good morning. This is Sipose to Libalele from Simonstown Low Hill Maritime Sector. I have a question based on the Harbour Master. So my question is, what kind of challenges do you often meet as the Harbour Master? Since you are an overseer, I think Ufunukuti Okay, from Guti, um, so this is for you, Captain Khadi. Gusipo said to Libalele from Simon's town. Question is based on the hard mass of um, being a harbor master, what kind of challenges do you often meet? Because you have to see the, um, the daily operations from the cargo transfer point. Okay, thanks, Luto. Um, I'm not really overseeing the cargo operations, but more of the safety of vessels coming in and out. Okay. And the challenges, I think one always needs to learn more because the requests that you get from shipping lines is not something that you always know. Sometimes you have to consult, you need to read more. So those are some of the good challenges. I mean, they are challenges, but I think that's what makes us love our job because it's different every day. So you get to work a lot with the internal and external clients and that again is some of the challenges, but as a person you grow. And so they're good challenges for me. Yeah, I think also because you're passionate um, about what you're doing. So when challenges come, you use them as an opportunity um, to grow and stay informed. Um, Teresa, here's one um, question for you. This says to you, Teresa, um, I was lucky to attend a Women in Maritime conference. One of the CPU2 students talked about not getting sea time because of being a female. I'm a black female dreaming of becoming a captain of a ship one day. 
Now, my question is, how can I overcome that challenge if it happens to be in my future? Okay, thank you for the question. I think it's a great question. So in South Africa, we have a reality in that we have a low percentage of actual ship ownership. So after students complete the theoretical component at the university, they are in a long line of students who are waiting to be placed on international ships. So we are at the mercy of international ships in many ways. Another government is working with the various shipping lines and with um, SAMHSA to negotiate on placement of South African students on board vessels. So, but being at that kind of, uh, I call it a T-junction. So the T-junction, if you turn left, you, you could be the type of person who's going to wait until you one day placed on a ship. But if you're the kind of person who says, OK, it's a bump in the road, it's a speed bump. If I'm going to turn right and I can see how I can use this opportunity, it means that with the theoretical components that you've already completed, you can add on additional components. For example, if you have a national diploma, you can bridge onto a bachelor degree, complete your degree and then find work as a graduate within the greater transport, logistics, sports, maritime sector and study research. One of the things that assisted me on my path when I when I was confronted with speed bumps is I volunteered in companies to work for free just to get the experience for my CV because everybody wants experience. So that is also an option instead of waiting. So I hope that, that I've covered um, the question in short. Yeah, no, um, I think it's, it's, it's so true what you're saying um, because there's no one way um, to actually answer that. But um, I've just gotten wind that we are going to, because I've got some more questions here, but what we're going to do is not only provide a link for the video, but add all these questions and answers. Um, because if it was up to me, we'd spend the entire afternoon sitting and answering, you know. <laughs> um, one last, one last note. Um, let me take one. I'm trying to find a short one. Um, the, okay, this is the last one. Um, yeah, this is the one I was looking for. Hi, I, I'm Tabo, currently doing my engine cadet at Umfolo Tibet College. I have S1 in marine engineering knowledge. I would like to ask if it's possible for me to serve my cadetship at Transnet. And I think um, that's our last question and anyone can, can answer. Maybe Captain, you can answer that one. <laughs> okay, let me ask the question again. I, I'm Tabo, so Tabo is currently doing um, his engine cadet um, at Mfolozi Tivet College. He has an S1 in marine engineering knowledge, naval, naval architecture rather, and marine law. Um, and they would like to ask if it's possible to serve the cadetship at Transnet. Well, I've just um, received that question. Is can, can we answer that or should we just add it to the Q&A because also of time? Yeah, Luto, uh, thanks, Ben. I think thank, thanks for the question. Look, I think um, you, it, it, be, it becomes a little bit technical. The question is asking um, all the requirements to, to be able, it de depends um, in terms of the, the, you know, maritime split in two sections, you have a deck side and the engine room side, engineers or deck side. And then, um, so the engineers, are they, they, their requirements are determined by what 
by the wattage of engines that, that they need to spend time on or they need to serve on. So so um, let's let's take the question and we can maybe investigate further um, um, the requirements. But I think in terms of uh, the SAMHSA requirements, it, it, it spells it out quite clearly. But I think um, we, we can assist the, the, the learner in, or the guy that's doing his C time already it shows he's got uh, he's got quite a bit of exposure already, but it it, it depends on the wattage of certain of the engine makeups in which we can um, then spend time on. Um, but we can assist him um, if he does post that question, no problem. Yeah, I think um, yeah that really does it, it is quite a technical question and would it would need more um, delving into. But um, just, you know, for closing remarks, I don't know how you guys feel. Um, please, you know, hit us up on WhatsApp. Um, let us know your comments, your feedbacks, um, any questions that you may have, because see, I understand that your partner, um, I pay lately and we cannot answer everything in just the time frame that we have. But in closing, um, I really would like to thank Transnet Le Leadership who are virtually connected all over um, with us and a massive shout out to the Transnet CSI team for what they're doing to our fantastic panel um you know what a, what what a selfless thing to do where you share your own experience but also imparting such knowledge um to the young people and i remind you guys from what umamuna and you said you know that there are so many careers and opportunities and above all pipelines that eventually may lead you there you know um there's also um what Oskomucho said it, it, the decision begins in high school and once high school is is done it's still a decision um you are the one steering your own ship you know um and then there's also what um teresa was saying is that she started off literally with this picture and it's so funny because i remember now you said it was called sea pride so to have your and that's such a that, that's it's such an expression because to be able to see pride, you have to see where it is that you want to go, you know. And again, it's really not where you start, and it's also not about stopping. Um, so thanks, Teresa, for that um, piece of insight that you gave us. And what Captain Khadi was talking about, especially in her own um, career in the beginning, you know, having mentors. Um, also, that comes from opening yourself up. Of course, if we get that when you find out if it was jail or what you were now, you ask you again whether or phone delay just now because you've studied or because you basically the bottom line is to get further. You you need to open up yourself so that the other person, the person who has more knowledge, is able to help you who may be just um, less experienced or less uh, less guided. You know. Um, and finally, um, Captain Bryn, you know, what he was talking about and also showed us, and I think it was such a moment, um, a revelatory moment, because he, he, he was a captain who was speaking about mentorship, yet the speaker before him was also loading him and his own contribution. So he really, what I want to touch from what he said was, Resonance, you've got to find Umtu Okwazi or Uteta Naye as Okwazi Ukneda, um, who has a vested interest in you, you know. And what I'm going to take from um, the final, um, the son of a fisherman is you must snap up the moment. So waste no time. Make sure you ask those questions. That number is 060 349 8195. And also, you know, just to, to remind you, we're living in a time where so much is changing. But in the Efana and the Maritime, it's one of those things that are, are eternal because we, we need it. So really invest yourself. You've had this opportunity now. You've got to use it to push yourself to the next level. Do the research. You heard the speaker say, um, and then all this information will be made available um, together with the link of the video. That number for the last time, 
um, big shout out to everyone involved today and to you, um, the young people of South Africa from each and every corner. Ninga Dima, also Ninga Kabi, bide your time, stick it to it, and eventually it will happen. You heard it first rate from our fantastic lineup um, that came through today. Um, with that said, from me, Luto John, um, yeah, thank you so much for this experience and um, good luck. God bless and talk soon. Cheers.